Judges chapter number 16. Shout out to all the young adults who are in. When I led young adults, I don't think we were as saved as y'all are, but uh, y'all are y'all are making us proud. All of us who are young adults and understand what it is to be a young adult. Judges chapter number, and I see y'all in worship in the front. It's going to be a game changer to the church. Judges chapter number 16. I, I typically like uh, being in a text, and so I last week we kind of bumped into something, and I was going to do a teaching a little different this week, but I wanted to continue and finish it so I could be at peace in my thinking as it relates to this particular text with Samson. So we, we're going to skip. Uh, Judges 14 was when Samson was born. Father and mother were told this guy is anointed and he's got a call. He's got a purpose. That's Judges 14. They said he's going to be a Nazarite known as to touch his hair because he's special. Judges chapter number 15, we find that he ends up seeing a young woman and his father tells him, I don't think that's the best choice for you, but he says, I want to date this woman anyway. And his father says, well, I don't think it's the best decision. She's from another tribe. They believe in a different religion. So why not find someone in your own family line? He says, no, I prefer to marry this uh, or, or marry this young lady. He ends up marrying her and she ends up betraying him and ends up ma uh, dating or f having a relationship with his best friend. And last week we talked about my girl is, is dating my best friend. And, and so then Samson spends his life on a spiral, a trajectory of, that's quite negative. And he's trying to figure out after that decision, he spends his entire life trying to get revenge on anyone who was associated with that situation. So now Judges 15, that's where we find him. And then Judges 16 is where we want to land. It says Judges 16. Now, after Samson had all of these things happen to him, remember I said, whenever your heart is broke, the neck, the, the, your worst decision is your next decision. And because y'all are going to be here on Wednesday night, I kind of want to prepare y'all for some work my pastor will do by just helping you get a little um, authentic in a sense that you may not necessarily get uh, in, in church, but I want to help you get there so that Wednesday the stage is set and when you invite all your friends to the church on Wednesday night and y'all all here at 645 and the men are here at 545 and people are texting about all the traffic that's here. We even hired Orange County Sheriff on Wednesday because we believe in faith that y'all not going to embarrass us and not show up. So um, we have sheriffs to direct traffic so that you don't be stuck so no one has an issue not to be here. Amen. Praise God. And verse number one says, and you shall be at the service on Wednesday. I'm sorry, I was reading out my Bible. Um, Judges 16 says, now Samson went to Gaza. And when you read the Bible, if you don't understand the Bible, you just read it and miss things. So Samson went to Gaza. Why? Glad you asked. Samson went to Gaza because Gaza was a place where you find temple prostitutes. So when some people don't make good decisions, and when life gets bad, they make sensual decisions. Oh, it's okay. Y'all don't y'all can be tight this morning. I'm I'm work right through it. So 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 he saw a harlot, a prostitute there, and and went to lay with her the night. I'm reading out New King James Version, but y'all got NIV. When the Gezites were told Samson was, was here, they surrounded the place and, and waited for him all night at the city gates. They were quiet all night saying, in the morning when it's daylight, we'll kill him. And Samson laid low till midnight and he arose at midnight, took hold of the doors of the gates of the city and, and the two gateposts pulled them up bar and all, pulled them on his shoulder and carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. Afterward, it happened that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. 
So he leaves a prostitute. He leaves a, a, a woman who's a prostitute and then ends up, after leaving the prostitute, he goes and dates Delilah. She's from Sorek. Sorek is important. Why does the author let us know she's from Sorek? Because Sorek is where he's from. Because most bad decisions happen where you're familiar. So, and the lords of the Philistines came up to him and said, entice him and find out where his strength lies and by what means we may overpower him, that we may bind him and afflict him. So Delilah said to Samson, please tell me where your great, great strength lies. With that, you may be bound to afflict. And then Samson, you know, tells her a thing. It's not true. She ends up calling the people in and then they realize that it's not the right thing. And she's like, you keep lying to me. Then he t tells her another truth, another false truth. And then she ends up trying to get him caught up again. I'm just telling the story for some of you that didn't go to Sunday school. Um, because there's a lot of us who've never heard the story because we didn't go to Sunday school. You can't assume people know the Bible. So the, the third time, Samson finally discloses his secret. And once he discloses his secret, she calls the five leaders of the Philistines to come and, and they, they, they tie him up and they take him in. And how he dies is they, they pull out his eyes and, and they, she cuts his hair off. And, and then once she cuts his hair off, God's spirit removes himself from Samson. And when Samson tries to shake himself, because every time he lied, God's spirit would still come on him. But this time when he tried to do it again, God had moved, which lets us know that God can remove himself from your life and you not know it. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. So he is thinking that God is still with him. He moves and he says it's his hair. The reality is I know you read the Bible and you say Samson cut his hair and that's why his strength was gone. That's not the case because Samson had violated a bunch of laws. You Number one, as a Nazarite, you weren't supposed to touch a dead carcass. He did that in chapter number 15. Number two, you weren't supposed to sleep with a prostitute as a, a Nazarite. He did that and God still worked with him. And when she cut his hair, that's when it happened. All these things simply say this. It wasn't in his hair. His strength was in God. And because God kept giving him another chance, he thought he'd be okay. It's going to get tight. So let's keep going. I want to just preach for a few moments of time from this thought, fatal attraction. You may be seated in the presence of God. Let's go to work. The anointed one called before he was born, according to Judges chapter number 14, he had a covenant with God. When God sat at the boardroom in eternity, his decisions to remedy the Philistines was to send a person to solve the problem. Samson's character flaw, I'm sure, did not catch God, who is omniscient, by surprise. He was anointed attractive for God to use but was distracted by his assignment because although he had supernatural strength his relational intelligence was subpar he loved what hurt him and hurt who loved him that's a bar Samson was married and spouse was given to his best man he never recovered from the effects of it so much so his father told him, Samson, since she left you and I gave her away because I thought you were angry, so I decided to give her away, why not date her younger sister who is better looking? That's important. He never recovered from the effects of hooking up with the wrong person. So whether you're a young adult, whether you're a single, whether you're married, whether you're in business, Whoever you hook up with matters. What could be a good business partner in one season? If you don't have relational intelligence, you won't recognize there'll be a nightmare in the next season. It is easy to look at Samson and shake your head. Perhaps you're Samson who has low relational IQ and your lust drives you more than your love. 
or you're like Samson and you've been betrayed and you're spending your entire life to revenge the wrong. Or maybe you're like Samson's wife. You're secretly dating your husband's friends or attracted to them. Maybe you're Delilah where you influence the influential by meeting areas not being met. Maybe you're the parent who encourages overcoming failure by finding another project. I want to spend a few minutes of time so we may take a look and not embarrass our pastor this Wednesday while visiting this title called Fatal Attraction. When Samson figured out that it wasn't working between his relationship with his wife, who the text never tells us he divorced. He ends up moving on to someone else. And when he ends up moving on to someone else, he's trying to figure out how do I recover from heartbreak? Because heartbreak isn't just fixed through prayer. It's also fixed by examining where you've been broken. That is not to say prayer is not a good tool or prayer is not a necessary instrument. But you and I must deal with heartbreak well or heartbreak will break us well. Gaza is like Vegas. It is a place known deep in the Philistine territory for nothing but sexual sin. The women that were in Gaza were typical temple prostitutes, which I want to kind of just throw this out there theologically because I'm working on my master's, so I just want to throw that out there for, for sake of time. Let's think about this. If where you're going, now these are temple prostitutes, so here's the question. If you're going to church where you're supposed to be the most spiritual, why would they have temple prostitutes at the temple? Okay, let me, let me, let me give you another New Testament verse. In Corinthians it says, if you're fasting, now typically when people want to get closer to God, we tell them, listen, go on a fast, do this, and, and if you're fasting, that means you are the most spiritual that you could ever be. Do you agree with that? This means that you are on a spiritual high if you're fasting that people have never seen before. But the scriptures say in Corinthians, in your Bible, it says that if you're married and you're fasting, you guys need to come back together immediately so that the devil doesn't have room. So that simply means that how could you be so spiritual, but yet Satan would have the ability to influence you sensually? which sometimes we could argue that maybe your sensuality sometimes could override your common sense. It's just a thought. It, it was against the Nazarite vow to have sexual relations with a prostitute. Fornication and adultery were against the Mosaic law, which was told Delilah's name means devotee or flirtatious. Because if you flirt with what you like, you'll get burnt by what you lust. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just getting started. So if you flirt with what you like, you'll get burned by what you lust. So Samson's walking down and he sees a flirtatious woman called Delilah. She is hired to go after Samson. Now, this still happens today in our world that people are positioned to take you off your spiritual game because you are trying to be spiritual but you haven't de with, dealt with your sensual side. It's getting tight in here. Samson was looking for love, but Delilah was looking for wealth. 
And many of you are challenged because as a single, you're trying to figure out who you're going to marry when they're trying to figure out who is their next come up. Delilah was good because she was able to get his confidence to allow him to be a confidant so when she became a confidant he trusted her with his secrets and when you trust people with your secrets you are bound by the secrets they know so Samson is trying to figure this whole thing out because all that got him to this place was he decided to do the right thing and get married but ignored what his father said when he said she not good for you which simply says that you can ignore all logical advice when you're led by your eyes and not your brain God's instruction Samson is a type of Israel Israel was always attracted to fatal they had a fatal attraction to other gods and so Samson's job was he wanted revenge to repay everyone who did this to him imagine you took my wife went with my best friend I'm going to pay everybody back connected to the situation he spends his entire life trying to prove someone who hurt him that they won't hurt him no more. Because if you don't resolve where you've been hurt, you'll spend your entire life trying to prove to other people who hurt you that you're not hurt no more to fail to recognize they don't care. So now here, here we go. Here we go. So Samson's father introduces him to comparison his father without teaching him tells him if you want to find I know your heart is broken son but he's trying to tell him indirectly a bad way to get over it well date date her sister she's younger and prettier well now what he's teaching him is is the is he's removing the ability to have the purity without comparison because whenever you compare what you have, you'll always depreciate what you have. Okay, okay, so, so have you ever been happy and then you look online and see, see somebody posting that they took their spouse to another country or something and you sitting at home trying to figure out where you're going to go on vacation and now you projecting to your spouse what you just saw and now they are now being penalized by what your eyes were lusting after. Y'all ain't talking to me, it's all right. So, so now you got a good husband, you got a good wife, but because you saw what your Instagram filtered friends put up, now you're bringing that same drama to your house, not recognizing that they're in debt to be in first class, and now you're projecting negativity on something that was good, and you're comparing what you have, and now what was good is no longer good because you're fooling around with other people's agenda so here we are Samson is tired he's anointed and in this text I need to work on this I got 17 minutes I got to do a real good job today so that you're back on Wednesday because he's gonna preach much better than me but um, I want to I want to kind of deal with this because this is in the text Samson was anointed and separated he was called to live for God and it appears if you're a young adult listen to me Samson got tired of being faithful because there is such a thing called faithful fatigue where Samson got within himself and said I want to be like them and he decided because he wanted to be like them he started to live like them. What he didn't recognize was they didn't have the covenant that he had. And so as a young adult, as a single, as a Christian, you could get tired of being righteous that it lets you end up being ratchet. Oh. 
no, 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 I'm not scared of none of y'all. I came to preach this morning. So what happened is, is Samson was tired of being righteous, so he ends up being ratchet, trying to feel a part of his life that he never lived. So now here is what happens with Samson is what you admire may be assigned to assassinate your assignment. No, no, no. no. If, if Satan wants to ruin your marriage, he don't necessarily need to give you more money. He just got to give you an opportunity for what you always wanted. Let me, let me kind of go here. You're not really spiritually strong. You just ain't had an opportunity. Because when opportunity meets desire, that's when we determine strength. I'm preaching better than y'all talking this morning. When opportunity meets desire, that's when we determine, are you strong? So now here it is. So here's the thing. Samson was not aware that what seduces your eyes today will suppress your senses tomorrow. Because when you lose, I don't know what, I don't know, I don't know, the text doesn't tell me, I don't, I don't know why, the text does tell me the father gave the, the wife to the best friend, but it doesn't tell me why doesn't tell me why she didn't fight, why she didn't say, I don't want to do this, I don't know, understand why, but Samson, because he was rejected, he found someone who he may have not liked, but they were available. See, some of you are not really in love, you just found what was available. So, Samson was married, but found someone else to meet his need. And the first one that he found to meet his need, he wasn't satisfied with. Because all lust does is it gets you to eat it, and then it leaves you still hungry. Now, brother, I know she fine on the job. And I know he fine, because it's not just people like men or dogs. Well, they cheating with women. And women, they, it's got some, some, some. All right, let me just. But isn't it crazy that Delilah's from his hometown. So she knows about Samson, because it's not a big town. So she's aware he was married. All right, I'll just miss what I just said. Delilah was aware of what happened. Because a lot of times, what you make public, you give your adversary. So Samson spends his entire life trying to get back, and he doesn't realize that getting your lick back will always require you to assume a character you don't want to be. They tried me. When they try you, it makes you assume a character. To get revenge, you have to take on a character you don't want to be. Are they worth it? Are they worth going to jail for? No, no. Uh, there's some people in this world that can piss you off so much that you understand in order to get revenge and you're fully capable. You have all authority to get... See, there's two sides. There's the Christian side and then there's a side that still has connections to another side. Just, just Samson was trying to get revenge 
and didn't recognize that whenever you try to get revenge, you have to take on a character of a person you don't want to be. And the danger of that is you may stay in character too long. So this is why God is clear that revenge is the Lord's. Because we want to see how God pays people back. But in actuality, God can pay people back in ways that you could never. Let me give you this because y'all may not know this. Samson experiences God moving on his life in an incredible way. I have found that the people who experience the most spiritual highs end up the next day depressed. Because what we don't teach you about the anointing is that the anointing uses your body. It uses your soul. But when it's done with you, you're responsible to care for the body it used. So you're like, man, I've been praying all day and all of a sudden I just feel so heavy. I don't know what it is. Well, remember, you're anoint when you give encouragement, you just gave what you had. So now when you don't have anything, that's where discouragement comes in. So you have to manage what you give out because if you give out more than you take in, that's when you start leaning towards your senses. Here it is. Spiritual highs must be managed well because your appetite will always try to feed from your spiritual high. His decision to sleep with a prostitute was a fruit of his thinking. Now, how could he sleep with a prostitute? You knew she was a temperate. You knew she was hired to do this. You knew she was out for That's like you saying all these things. Have you ever dated someone and now you look back and you're thinking to yourself, why? Just look straight ahead. You might be sitting right next to him. Just look straight ahead. No, just joking. So can I ask you a question, Mike, Sean? Let me just ask you this question. Samson was anointed. He was gifted. He was called. He was powerful. But he medicated his rejection with finding anyone who would satisfy his sexual appetite. My question to you is, how do you manage your rejection pain tolerance? Is it alcohol? Is it porn? See, listen church, the only reason why porn has so much power is because you can't tell nobody. Who are you finna tell? I saw y'all look at me like that. Who, who you finna tell? Husband, who you finna tell? Huh? Come on, talk to me. We already here. We might as well go all the way. Who you finna talk to and say, I'm struggling with porn and I'm about to go into the bedroom with my spouse, but I need to look at this first for me to be satisfied. Wives, oh, don't look at me like that and say preach to the man because you have your own set of stuff too. You're just good at doing it sneakily. You lifting your hands in worship and you got stuff underneath your iPhone that people would never know you had. Or your burner phone. And the reason why you can't get delivered is because you're bound in secrets. So Samson was a wrecking ball because there was no one in his path to stop him from wrecking himself because they saw his strength and not his weakness. When I talk to people that are great, I ain't concerned about your greatness. I want to know your weakness. Because you're making money, but that making money doesn't mean you're not weak. I always tell people, I'm cool. I know a lot of people's secrets and I never tell them. I want to tell them my wife. 
But if I have Alzheimer's, y'all just go ahead and lock me up, put a muzzle over my mouth. That's just keep it that way. Just don't, don't even. Because here's every man needs a place to be human. Y'all didn't hear what I said. I don't care how much trophies you got. I don't care how many cars you buy. Every place that a man is, they need a place to be human. The problem is, can I talk to you for a second? Because my pastor's going to talk to y'all this Wednesday at 6, because I, I know y'all are going to embarrass me. The problem is, is you being human with Delilah. Because Delilah understands. Just look straight ahead. Just look straight, straight ahead. You, you're doing the thing. You're doing the house thing. You're doing the family thing. But Delilah got your number. No, 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 no. Don't think it's just Samson. Because some of y'all got your own Delilahs and you're a woman. You just disguise it well. And here's the tragedy. It all started from one rejection. Think about how far you can go when you're disappointed by your expectations. One life situation spirals him into a cycle and he don't know how to get out. And because it's so easy, he don't even go looking for it, but he go looking for him or looking for her. So now here it is. Y'all ready? I'm about to close. Y'all look tired. There is a question in this text that I need to ask because the text does ask a question. It's not a question mark after it, but it is a question. Samson is married and he ends up going to a prostitute. The question is, is why did you pick a prostitute? Y'all not ready. No, y'all not ready. He loved a woman who loved money so he didn't realize one bad relational pick can create a cycle of picking what you reject. So you pick the trait that is most dominant in you. All right, can I give you this for free? If you don't fix your father issues, you'll end up marrying your daddy. A degree doesn't mean you're fixed. Amen. Put your hand on your head and say, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. This is getting, this is, help me, Lord. Samson didn't recognize. Samson was saved, but wanted nasty too. It's in your text. I know they don't preach about it, and that's why we all in trouble. Because Samson was spiritual, but he also was attracted to the street thing. So don't be so sanctified maritally that you don't pull on the other side too. Y'all just y'all just looking real. I didn't. I try to help y'all. Y'all just looking real crazy. So here's the thing, what looked good to Samson wasn't good for Samson. Amen. Amen. A, listen to this one, seduction through Delilah 
caused him to marry his emotions and divorce his intellect. Wow. Y'all just rewatch this again, okay? <laughs> Seduction made him marry his emotions and divorce his intellect. Let me hurry up. A bad pick gouged his eyes, tied his hands, and redirected his strength to silence. So here's what I want to leave you with. the wrong connection won't let you see well. Okay, can I give you a, this is not in the Bible, but I would tell my daughters this, if they get married. I think I want both of them to be a nun. <laughs> you need to keep people in dating phases close enough to you so that when you're falling in love, they can hold you up. What I mean by that is people start dating and they fall in love and they fall out of their sense. You starting to do some crazy stuff. You starting to look like you being taken advantage of, but in the name of love, you're doing it because you just want to be loved. You need someone that can stand you and say, okay, you're doing a little too much. Not someone that's jealous of your relationship, but a marital mentor that can say, yeah, that's a little much. All right, let me, let me move on. So, okay, all right, all right, this one will help. Let's go with this one. So, Samson went to Sorek, his hometown, because he felt that maybe it's a safe place. And just because we starting in the same place doesn't mean we're going in the same place. So I would like to use the term, you should marry destiny partners. People that complement your destiny, not constrict it. Okay. According to scripture, scripture says that a, a spouse is supposed to help add value to the person that they are married to. They could have their own vision or they could be in love with your vision and support yours. In today's culture, everyone has their own callings. You have your calling, I have my calling. And our callings come together and we have a family. However, our calling should complement each other. I support you in your dream, you support me in mine. They're complementary, not in competition. Because if you're threatened by my calling, then our love will be threatened. All right, this is my last point, I promise, because I want to make sure that on Wednesday night, y'all have enough time to be here. All right. You, say this with no music so that they can hear it, just like they heard that Wednesday at 6 o'clock for the men and everyone else 7. It don't matter, you marry, we all come together because we want this church to be beautifully full. Here it is. This is the famous phrase that I want to leave you with at 12.02 and 11 seconds. You cannot replace what has not been repaired. Samson chose a replacement without repairing the spot that was once occupied. Let me say it one last time for the person in the back. You can't replace what has not been repaired. Samson chose a replacement without repairing the spot she once occupied. 
Now, we live in a culture where people get divorced. I'm not advocating divorce. There are situations and circumstances where divorce is necessary. Conti is one of the best divorce lawyers in town, and she's a member of the church. A while ago, she sent me a, a certified package, I think it was, and I was like, why am I getting divorce packets from Conti? What's going on here? So I had to call, let me open this up. Conti, what's going on here? She's like, oh, it's just a gift. I was like, you got to be careful as a divorce attorney sending people gifts. We don't want gifts. <laughs> but, but here's the thought. If you don't get healed, your next person can't be your therapist for healing. Right, so, so it requires God work. It requires self-work. When I say self-work, that doesn't mean you doing it yourself. That means you allowing those God has anointed with their ministry in the marketplace to help you where you are. There's so much to say, and I want to wait till Wednesday to say it. But I will say this, how you're brought up, if not corrected, will destroy where you are because your past is not just your past, it is also an ingredient that is quietly placed in your future. I'm out of time. I don't want to be accused of being a long church. Bow your heads, let's pray. Lord, so many things to digest and to put into context. The Word of God is a double-edged sword. It cuts, but it also heals. So in this sermon, there's a space everyone finds themselves in. Maybe it's someone who's here, they're on the verge of leaving their Samson. Or a Samson on the verge of leaving their partner. And this helps reconcile. Maybe it's, it's, it's a friendship, it's a business partnership, whatever it is. We, we need to make some relational shifts to help us grow into destiny. Not just grow into destiny, go into destiny. So Lord, help us all, even in friendships, identify healthy ones, reject those that are not healthy, or help us to have the patience to help them become healthy. So, Lord, your desire for us is to live in harmony with people. You bless us through people, but Satan and humanity, we are hurt through people. So, God, help us navigate spaces in our world, whether it's loss that is causing us pain or wherever it is or whatever it is, that, God, you would be with us and that you would help lead us. Now, Lord, I pray for my brother, my sister who's here today sitting in the sanctuary and and I pray against the pride that comes into hearts when messages like this is taught where they reject it because they think it's for someone else when it's really them so God help us be better so we can look more like you and be like you if our pursuit is to follow God God help us to follow you over the hurdles that come with being human and that come with living in this life in the matchless in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. At the end of the service we're going to have our intercessors here. March we'll go back to doing it the regular way. We'll have our intercessors here. We've seen you all respond to that. We'll have our intercessors here receiving you. Give me a few moments before you walk and, and, and leave. I want to make sure we do this. If you'll honor me with a few more minutes that would be greatly appreciated. So I want us to honor God in our giving. This is the part of service that continues our worship experience. So I want many of you, y'all all in this room, what happens when there's a lot of people in the room is we think, oh, they got it. They're going to give on my behalf. Let's all do our part and let's honor God collectively together. 
Let's respect this moment. Let's sow in this moment. Let's participate in this moment. Ushers are coming to you if you need an envelope. Just raise your hand. They're coming to you. I want to challenge many of you, even if you're in our online space, I want to challenge you to do a gift that's significant, that's generous. Your generosity makes the difference. I want every person in this room to figure out what is generous to you, every single person. Don't just watch and participate, but be one that does generosity. Every single person, however that looks like. Maybe it's 30, maybe it's 40, maybe it's 50, maybe it's a thousand, maybe it's a million, I don't know. How God uses you, that's between you and God, but God should be using you to support the work of the ministry. There's now an opportunity to use Zelle. If you're a Zelle user, you can scan the QR code. That gives you another capacity, another avenue by which you can give. They're coming to you if your hands are raised. Give us seven minutes and you'll be out. We want our team to be able to do their job in peace, our security team to be able to function without people moving around them. You make their job easier. They don't have to look at you as a threat. We want to respect you. So please respect the time so we can do this in an orderly way. Ushers are serving you now. I want all of us who are doing it electronically, if you're online, you're doing it with us, put some fire in the chat. Let us know you're participating with us. Happy birthday to you, Rico. Good to see you. We want you to honor the Lord with your substance and with your giving. So let's do it right now. Thank you for doing it. Thank you for taking the time and not being greedy, but being selfless. You're taking the time to be selfless and give in this moment. Thank you for doing that. We appreciate you. Thank you online for coming in agreement with us, man. We couldn't do what we do without our global family, so thank you for doing that. Thank you for sewing with us. Ten seconds, we're going to pray. on our social media page and your stories. I know I've belabored it a lot, but trust me, the services that I need you to be at, I will tell you this is one. There's only two a year that I'm like, it's a really, really big deal, and this one is one. So let's pray over our giving. I want to give with you. I want to give with you. Let's do it together. I'm not going to ask you to do anything that I'm not doing with you. Because I believe when we give, God does great things. Yesterday we were out eating dinner for my assistant Jim's birthday. It was a table of us. And God can bring you increase in ways that you never imagined. There was about maybe 15 of us at the table or 12. A businessman walked up to me and said, hey, how you doing? I said, good, man. It's good to see you. I invited him to the church again. He said, is that my personal invitation? I said, yeah, man, that's your personal invite. It's always open to you. He walks away. I go pay for my bill. And the man, the waiter says, the guy that you mentioned paid for the entire table. Okay? So I'm, I'm simply letting you know, like, when you give in this moment, God doesn't have to give you more money. He can do things like that for you. He blessed people that were at the table he didn't even know without even knowing what their bill was. That's the type of God that we serve that can give you increase when we trust him. So Father, thank you for these gifts that we give into the kingdom of God. Multiply them, let them be used for the advancement of your house, for the fulfillment of your service. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. While our ushers are receiving, please give them a few moments. Our team just wants to tell you about growth groups, and we will be out of here. Thank y'all so much. Give it up for the word this morning. Come on, y'all. Give it up for the word this morning. If you enjoyed it, let our pastor know. What a wonderful word. Put the music down just a little bit. If I can have my growth group facilitators start coming up in the front. Growth group facilitators start coming up in the front for our special announcement for growth groups. 
We're not going to keep you too long, but we do want to give you an opportunity to see some of the growth groups we have this semester. Before we do that, I also want to remind you that our pastor is selling his book, Recalibrating Your Relational IQ. If you believe this message was amazing and last week's message was amazing, please, all of that and then some is in this book. I always say we spend as a society a lot of funds in artificial intelligence, but we need to spend more time investing in our human intelligence. And what better way to do that but getting this book, it would be for the better for you and your relationships as well. As our facilitators come up, can we give it up for our growth group facilitators? They're looking good. Just to show you how important growth groups are, the growth group I belong to is the Marriage Enrichment Growth Group. Come on, give it up for the married people in the house. Say, hey. We had a wonderful, wonderful night at our game night last Friday. And I just want to say, the bottom of my heart, I believe the women, the wives cheated. And that's why they won, but that's okay. We were having fun. We laugh, and we just love the company of other married couples that love each other and love the Lord and still want to have fun. Amen? So that's why we want you to be part of a growth group. And right now, I just want to have a few people to share what their groups are about, and I'll have Nate go first. Hey, guys. As I've shared uh, before, we're doing a, a growth group called Raising Superheroes. It's for parents who are raising children with special needs. So if you're a parent... Or even if you're a family member and you would like to figure out how to have support, what to say and what not to say around parents who are dealing with the struggles of uh, raising amazing superheroes, that'll be our group. We'll be outside in the lobby and can't wait to connect with you all. Give it up for Nate and Raising Superheroes. Our next group, Ms. Janae. Hello, everyone. My name is Janae Thomas, and myself and my co-lead, Kanisha, are leading the Close Friends Sisterhood Edition for all the ladies in the house. We wanted to create a safe place for us to talk about business, community, support, and finances. So if you are a lady in the room, please join us. And last but not least. Hi. Welcome. Well, what am I saying? Uh, hi, my name is Demisha Suazo. I am co-leading with Stephanie Richard. We are doing a growth group called Healthy Minds, Healthy Lives. We are both licensed therapists, and we think that there is an interesting dialogue at the intersection of the Word of God and therapy, and so we're hoping to create a safe space for um, people to come out. We're going to be doing it virtual Tuesdays at 7.30 via Zoom. Thank you guys so much. Give it up one more time for all the growth groups. It will be outside in the lobby, and we are using Church Center app to go ahead and register for each growth group. We hope to see you there. God bless. All right, give it up for all the growth groups, y'all. Real quick, I just want to acknowledge and love on our first-time guests who are here. Can we make some noise for our first-time guests? If this is your first time worshiping with us, we have our ushers who are coming and standing on post to show you guys we have a reception in your honor. We just want to put a gift in your hand and tell you thank you for worshiping with us. This is your first time worshiping with us. Can you wave your hands at me real quick? If this is your first time worshiping with us, come on, make some noise for our first time guests, y'all. All you have to do is just follow these amazing ushers and they're going to lead you back to our guest reception. Can we make some noise for them right now? If that's you, go ahead and follow them. They're going to take you back. Praise the Lord. Amazing. Come on, one more time. Let's, give, let's make some noise for our first-time guests. All right, let's stand to our feet. We're going to pray, and I need some of our guys to help us out. Just like we did last week, we moved the chairs in that section. You guys see the beautiful floors. We're actually going to do this entire section on this side. It's going to take, we literally took uh, less than two minutes to stack the chairs because we had all the guys come and help us. So dear Heavenly Father, thank you again for allowing us to be in your presence. We ask God that you would be with us, that you would allow us to be aware of your presence in our lives. Help us to leave this place but never your presence. Give us traveling mercies and help us to have testimonies of your goodness so that we can come back and celebrate the goodness of God in 
this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys have an amazing week. All oh my guys, if you guys can help me out real, real quick so we can stack these chairs in this section right here. It'll only take us about two minutes.